Hi, welcome to Art Friends. Uh, we are friends who do art. I'm Opalia and I'm now... I don't know what I should say. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, visited by? What, what Joined by? Just... Joined! <laughs> 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 okay. Yay, okay. you did it. If we Yay. ever swear, I just want a squeaky toy noise to be it. Welcome to Art Friends. We are friends who do art. I am Opali and I'm joined by Cohen and Coda today. We are talking about art styles. Yeah, so, introduction. you got that a lot done in that one sentence. That was so freaking quick. <laughs> <laughs> rap it. Oh, should I do it a little bit slower? We need to put <laughs> no, a rap beat fine. behind that. Yes, Coda, you, you get to edit all of this. Have fun. Uh, <laughs> Should I do it a little bit slower? No, no it's, it's fine. fine. We'll work with it. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Like, like Apollyas <laughs> said. Uh, we are not editing this out. If you can hear me. Out, we didn't edit it out. Thank the Lord. Uh, yep, I'm oh going to have to use either this or the first intro. So hooray. <laughs> <laughs> I could do a third one though. No. No. Not allowed. We already broke the immersion, but anyhow, hello, we, we're we here, we're talking about art styles. We're talking about art styles, what about them? Just kind of things in general. Just mm. yay. questions like, do you need one? Uh, how do you find one, if so? And so on, so forth. Koda, Koda, stop right there. Do you need an art style? Do I personally need an art style? Yes. Uh... It makes me feel special. Honestly, Why does it, it make you what... feel special? Dude. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being interrogated, please. Yes. Cohen is flicking on that light, of, uh, flicking on and off a lamp in my face. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you know. Where are the strobe waffles? <laughs> <laughs> Give up. Honestly, I think it depends if you need an art style or not. Uh, like, if you do realism, there's no not much like room for an art style. But the more you go into like this comic caricature, uh, like territory stylization, yeah, the the more important it is. Like, and if you really need like a standing out art style, is the question. Like, I think it's fun to have one that is like special on its own. But if you are like a beginner or an intermediate and think that like your art style is like everybody else's it's okay like we all start at one point and we all have like the same art style once Indeed. like if we yeah exactly like anime artists have like the same art style at one point like especially airbrush <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah do i think you need one i think it depends on what field you're going into you know so, for mm. example, if you're trying to work in the industry, you don't really need a style because you're going to be working on different shows and movies and whatever where you have to draw on different styles constantly. But if you're going to be a freelancer, it's nice to have something unique that sets you apart from other freelancers. Otherwise, no one's really going to commission you if, if you don't have anything to offer that they can't get somewhere else. Exactly. Like for character design, it's always fun to have like your own style because then they can decide if your style of clothing, your style of color uh, is also good for their character designs. You know? Indeed. You guys are being really creepy right now. <laughs> I like that. Every time I was like, all right, as soon as she as soon as they finish this sentence, I'm going to jump in <laughs> and talk about that. You don't need that. You need a style as an illustrator in the industry and as a freelancer and stuff. And then Coda starts like, yeah, I think it also depends on your profession. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Sorry, Cohen. What are your opinions your on it, Cohen? You guys covered a lot of freaking ground already. My God. Uh, I think. Bang, bang. Style, okay, sorry. fun to have, but don't let it distract you. If you're, if you're thinking more about, oh, no, I need a, I need a unique style than freaking oh no i need to improve or oh no i want to draw then that's a bit of a problem so don't worry about it yes. but don't interpret that as oh I, you shouldn't worry about style because it can be really important and if you're unsatisfied with the way you draw currently that kind of sucks so look at other artists and examples and see what they do how they do it and what they use, for example, or what techniques they use, more specifically, 
because tools don't matter whatsoever. And just take that and incorporate it into the way you draw now. And you might think that's stealing, but it isn't. It's stealing is allowed. <laughs> yes. I mean, exactly. it, it's stealing. <laughs> just... yeah. Well, I, I, think, I think you're right, Cohen. And to elaborate on what you said, I think uh, we have to figure out what an art style is. And what it is, is a way that someone consistently puts marks on a paper. For example, if someone's art style has a lot of sharp edges, or if someone consistently draws the noses the same, what makes an art style identifiable is the way someone consistently draws things. So, yeah, exactly. uh, you Somewhat. could edit the way your art style works That's with really... ease by just stealing mm -hmm. how other people consistently draw things. I feel like it's even vaguer. <laughs> I think you like steal in quotation marks like little snippets of other art styles like Oh not in quotation marks, you just straight up steal it. That's yeah, how exactly. you do it. Um the thing is like you see someone drawing like extremely beautiful and long legs, so you're like, damn, I like those long legs, so I will use oh, them Paulia. myself. Don't at me. Um <laughs> <laughs> Then you see someone being like, Oh, I love drawing small or simplified hands and you're like, Yes, I will do that myself and like slowly but surely, like by learning things that other artists did, you are getting like your own art style. And since your muscle memory is different than theirs, you can like not draw exactly like them. So you True. draw your own way. So you because... have those basics, but you draw them in your way. Because the way, you... because I can't stress this enough. It's it's literally impossible. For two people to do the same thing because mm. art yeah, yeah imagine handwriting no one has the same handwriting right i have a very generic handwriting <laughs> and the, the difference is part. and the difference is that handwriting is just like 26 letters art is literally infinite things you can mm. draw like anything and right within those everything you can draw in infinite combinations of things well, technically, numbers are also letters. Shh! <laughs> Apalia, please. I don't know what that means, and I don't want to think about it. <laughs> I meant you can also write numbers, and numbers are also letters. My Brian is not big enough for this. <laughs> please, ease up on the Brian. A thing about stealing, people. Mm -hmm. Fun thing is, if you steal from one person, people are going to tell you, oh my god, your stuff looks just like Opalia, you're like the next Opalia. But if you steal from Opalia, Coda, freaking everyone, Van Gogh, Rembrandt, I don't know what other artists, Picasso, infinite mm. possibilities, whatever, whatever, and artists you like, then you'll be super unique. No one will have seen stuff like you. You so, will only not be unique if you trace. Obviously. I like to think about Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein's probably made up of a dude named Jim and a dude named Bill. And, you know, but when people see Frankenstein's monster, they're not like, hey, is that Jim? I see Jim. No, he, he put together a bunch of other people to make something completely new. True, but that's like a few limbs and a torso. Think of it like a blender. Throw all of those artists in the blender. Yes. Please don't do that literally. We do not yes. condone artist yeah. murder. Do it. Go ahead. No, go ahead, no! <laughs> Homework. Throw artists in a blender. Now, I think we've started kind of talking about how do you get an art style, right? Uh, True. And uh, I think not always do you have to try, you know? It, it kind yeah. of happens. Like, anything you draw right now is in your style. Your brain is programmed with a certain way you like to draw. A so, thing people also don't think about much is that style also includes subject matter. It so, does. for example, uh, my style would be recognizable for, I don't know, monsters and teeth, because I, rec because I draw a lot of monsters and teeth. People have never pointed the, out that I, I don't know, I'm not good at drawing knees or whatever. That I just don't draw knees, really. Mm. And that's technically a part of my style, but people don't point it out. They point out monsters. And for Koda, they would point out the faces. All the freaking faces. <laughs> uh, so many, many faces. faces. All the faces. Yeah. And for Apalia, they would point out a lot of things. 
Yes, Apollya, just humans. Just, she is the human master. <laughs> yes. That sounds wrong in the wrong context. It... People are going to take this out of context. <laughs> <laughs> I am the human master. I control the humans. No, that's me. She is the human master. She <laughs> controls the humans. Oh, jeez. So, so, yeah, I, I think... Uh... Really, you don't have to try to steal from other artists, even. Like, how I started drawing faces uh, in this new style I've been trying out was literally, I drew a bunch of realistic faces, and then was like, now I'm gonna make And where did browse. you... Huh? Where did you take those... Where did you find those realistic faces? Did you draw them from reference? Yes, of course. I'm not then just... you're stealing from real life. Well, yeah, but I said you don't have to steal from other artists. Steal from real life more than anything, honestly. Steal from everything. Steal. Steal, steal everything. From everything. Steal from everything, because anything. We, you, you as a person, like an artist, can't make anything up. They have to have seen something that has inspired that thing in their mind. They can't just make something up. Now, there's things like creature designs, but no one would have ever thought to have creatures with anatomy if anatomy didn't already exist, you know? So, just, Deep. you can't make art without stealing from real life. So just steal. Just steal. Just steal. So, I think, I think that's how we discovered to get an art style, is just steal. Just draw the things you like and steal the things you like from other places until eventually yeah. you have a blender, a, a, a art style smoothie, if you will, of all the things you enjoy the most. That's an interesting way of putting it. Steel blenders. <laughs> steel blenders. Go to go go to your local electronic store and just steal the blenders. I don't know why, but I expected you to say Home Depot, even though I'm not even living in America. <laughs> yes, Home Depot, my favorite place to get blenders. Uh, <laughs> Wait, you not you do not get uh, blenders at Home Depot. You do not get blenders at Home Depot. <laughs> Unacceptable. I'm going to sue them. Where else would you get them? Target? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, Target! <laughs> We're just talking about American supermarkets now. Well, that took a turn. Indeed. Speaking of stealing, like, art styles come from stealing. But can you steal an art style? Short answer? No. Long answer? Yes, no. but. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think a most common art style I've seen stolen, quote unquote, a lot is Vizzy Pop. I see people really? draw in her style all the time. The Hasman's Hotel one? Did you Hasmet call it Hasman Hotel? Hotel? <laughs> Hasman's Hotel, quarantine. <laughs> quarantine Hasmet... <at> hard. <laughs> Wait, I just thought of the perfect tagline. Hasman's Hotel, quarantine in hell. <laughs> You're welcome. That's literally quarantine for every extrovert. <laughs> Poor Apalia. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, people, I see people drawing the style of Hasman's Hotel all the time. Mm. Hasmat Hotel, my favorite cartoon. <laughs> I think it's Hasman's, right? Has been. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> See, we, we have done so much research. We are always incredibly prepared. You're <laughs> I only remember that it was hyped up a lot. Hyped up Hotel, the sequel. Yeah. Anyways, but I also think that the Cal art style is like getting used a lot in Yeah. So mostly and... by other cartoons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cal Arts is kind of in the industry, but everyone's taking that big bulgy cheek style. Uh you see a lot of in like Instagram newer Instagram artists using that big cheek style. They like the big cheeks. The big cheeks. Uh... Speaking of out of context, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Can you steal an art style? I personally believe that you can't fully steal an art style. Can you copy? No. Yes, you, but you cannot yeah. fully steal one because it's literally impossible to mm -hmm. draw consistently in the exact same style as somebody else. I mean, exactly. you can't even you can't even draw consistently in your own style, really, because you won't put down the same marks every single time. If you would be able to. 
uh, have the same exactly consistent style, then you would only draw the same exact thing every time. And that's just really boring. So I think what stealing an art style comes from is when, like we were talking about with like the smoothie, blending a bunch of artists and inspirations together, having mm. a lack of art, art, copying someone else's art style is when you make a smoothie, but you only add one ingredient. Yeah. As yeah. I said, if you do that, you'll just become the next dad artist, or that artist will find out and he'll be like, hey man, that's not cool, you should probably do something else. Or if it's deviant art, I'm going to sue you! Yeah. <laughs> Did you just copy my color palette? I mean, guys, like, a smoothie with just one ingredient is a juice, and we don't want a juice, we want a smoothie. We do not yeah. want a juice. Well, a smoothie with one ingredient, maybe that ingredient is ice, so a copied art style is water. You heard it here first. This is so deep. <laughs> because, because it is just a watered-down version of the original. Bam. Whoa. Whoa. Bam. Whoa. Conspiracy theories with Coda. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Man. You just mind blew us, Coda. Coda. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's definitely me who came up with that. You are welcome, internet. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, there's a good quote. I forget exactly who it's from, but it says, if you're going to copy, make it better. So I, I kind of live by the idea of if you are going to copy someone else's art style, if you get so much inspiration from them that you want to make a water smoothie, then make it better. Find some way to improve it. Put some strawberries in it. Yeah, put some strawberry. Everyone wants some watered down strawberry juice. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think? Can you steal an art style? And if so, is it morally correct to do so? I don't think so. And even if it would be possible, is stealing morally correct? Yeah. Steal people. Steal everything. Anarchy. <laughs> Yes. You heard it here Steal first. The blenders. <laughs> That's the end of the episode. Steal everything. We'll see you guys. <laughs> no. no one's around to safeguard the stores. Get it now. <laughs> it's it's so much sugar today. <laughs> so what were you saying, Ophalia? I was saying Hazmat's Hotel because I just couldn't stand it. So, Cohen, uh, Apollia, do you guys think you could steal an art style? And is it morally okay? Because that's what you were talking about, Apollia. I think you can obviously copy things of an art style, but you cannot fully steal an art style. I mean, the style challenge exists. Yeah. Yeah, and I've never seen anyone get it dead on. Yeah, and it's basically, that challenge is more of a style study, really. And a style yeah. study is just like... Uh, it's kind of like tracing, because you're taking someone else's work and you're breaking it down, seeing what's good about it. But don't put it up as your own work, because that's a bit iffy. Indeed. Just bit, the bit smallest iffy. bit. Well, how much stealing is too much if it's a bit iffy, you know? So, like, how much inspiration can you take from one artist before it becomes... Uh, not... I mean, as long as you don't just do the same and just... Like, not take inspiration anywhere else, and just... Like, there are people who just blindly follow other artists and don't look anywhere else, and I think that's kinda odd. When it comes to being morally correct, I think stealing art style is fine, it doesn't really matter. The person you stole yeah. from, it probably doesn't affect them much. However, uh, when it comes to actually improving as an artist, worrying about style and only studying one other artist is going to limit your skill uh, in it, incredibly. Just You're going to be super limited in what you can learn. Yeah, that's true. So when it comes to morally, I don't think it's really that morally bad to take tons of inspiration from one artist, but it is when it comes to building your skill set. Moral, 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 moral lesson, everyone. If you're going to steal, it's all right. Just steal from as many people as you can. <laughs> if you're going to break into one house, break into a few to make the whole neighborhood uh, share the pain. Wonderful quotes, Kauda. Please cut that out. <laughs> <laughs>
No. <laughs> um. Honestly, though, I think that only like studying the fun- fundamental. <laughs> honestly, I think that only studying the fundamentals is also not enough. Like, yeah. if you only ever study, you will never like trust yourself to draw something like bigger, like draw an illustration. If you only do in- illustration, it will be harder to start studying. It's good to have like a very healthy relationship of both. Like, if you feel like studying, go study. If you feel like drawing, go draw. But I think it's also a good way to just do it. Like, you want to draw a background, then draw the background. Is the perspective bad? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, will you be better the next time? Yes. Just get it out of your system. Like, you don't have to do one way or the other. You can do your own way, but I think that the best way is of doing like a healthy way of doing all three things, like uh, study, illustration, and just try and see other artists' styles and go after that. Like, see what an artist is doing and maybe get inspired by that to draw something similar, you know? Good talk, wrong topic. <laughs> yes. Uh... Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Hey, you guys were talking about improving the whole time, okay? Just wanted yeah, to fine. go onto the train wagon. Well, okay, so we've talked a lot about what makes style is copying bad. Do you guys think a style is helpful or harmful? Do you think it, uh, do you think you need one? Or, you know, what do you think about that? If if you in the slightest see it getting in the way, like oh I'm not sure if I if this is in my style, just don't think about it. Just draw, just draw. It'll be fine. I think as soon as you have one, it's like winning in lotto. Honestly, like you have done something that um, you can reach after a long time of studying. So I think it's helpful to have an art style at one point and be like, I can draw this, but it's also a resemblance of like what I can do. So I think that art styles can be very helpful, but then someone knocked us at Coda's door. Dun, dun, dun. You just need to keep talking, really. Yeah, It'll but the knocking kind of was in between of my sentence. <laughs> Too bad. I oh, feel man. like he can cut out the individual audio. Not sure how he does that. Oh well. I don't think so. Ah. Hello, I'm back. Hello. Also, just because Coda was muted doesn't like on Discord doesn't mean that the recording was muted, you know. Yeah. All right. So he has to. So what exactly sense. did you say? Oh god, what did I say? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, well that's I fine. I'll I'll attention. I'll just see what you said in editing. But what I think about is an art style helpful or harmful. It's helpful when you're trying to get jobs uh, for clients, but it's harmful if you decide that this is my art style. You know, for example. I, I used to draw in a very CalArts-esque, cartoony, bug-eyed style. Instead of getting attached to that, I started finding that I enjoyed drawing these characters with really tiny eyes more and more realistic style faces. So I started drawing that more. Even though it didn't fit into what my brand was, my style was, I enjoyed it more. So I started drawing that. You know, don't let it limit you. Because that's exactly. harmful. But if you find one it can be helpful for marketing. I mean, your style can also be your specific skills. You might get hired like, oh, I'm going to hire Koda because we need character portraits and this guy still draws faces after 20 years. (laughs) I think it's it's harmful as soon as you work like in an industry where they need one art style and nothing like individual. Cal arts. uh, Yeah, exactly. Or like when someone is working on a comic or manga, you need that one consistent art style. Just imagine every page looking different, right? Just imagine working with multiple people and every page looks like uh, extremely different from the art style. Like one person is drawing their eyes very small, the next one is drawing, I don't know, noodle arms. Right. That doesn't work. If, if you're going to work in the industry, art styles can indeed be harmful, which 
of course yeah. they're not inherently bad but if like i said you're getting limited to your style and think that's who i am and that's how i need to draw then you're not going to be able to work in the industry because you yeah. can't draw like that on other people's projects we yeah. are definitely industry professionals. We know so yeah. much. Yes, we have been working in the industry for, what is it, zero days now? Wow, that time went by fast. Mine, minus, minus, uh, like minus four to six years on my end. <laughs> oh, very nice, Cohen. Happy uh, negative six year anniversary. Thanks, really appreciate it. Big preach, big preach. <laughs> Should you consciously edit your art style to appeal to certain people? Should you, you know, like, force an art style instead of just draw what naturally comes to you? Or should you always draw what naturally comes to you and see what crowd naturally follows you? Alright, I think I have a good one on this, but I'll let Opalia talk first. Um, I think you shouldn't do it to, like, what's the most beloved fandom or the most liked fandom you should do it like after fandoms that you like if you have a fandom where you're like man i love that art style and drawing that art style of that fandom that you like like keep it personal don't just uh like follow what gets the most likes i guess yeah don't don't edit your style Fantastic. to get more likes very nice when you want to edit your style it shouldn't feel bad it should feel like an extension of what you normally draw like mm-hmm. if you're if you're trying to, I don't know, work at Blizzard, you're like you look at Blizzard artists style and you're like, oh, dang, uh, they do a lot more rendering than I do. They're a lot cleaner. I guess I'll try to do those. And then you do those. And if it doesn't feel like, oh god, this sucks, I I hate it. <laughs> Lincoln Park music intensifies. Uh, <laughs> then then it's all good and it's really good for portfolios as well. Like. Again, if you're working in industry, because we all are so, so professionals, you do need to cater your portfolio sometimes. So catering your portfolio uh, is, to an extent, important. Yes. You can't join an animation studio if you're only, I don't know, doing full-blown paintings and still lifes. They need animators. Wouldn't it be silly if you want to work in the animation industry, except you did no animation? Yes, that would be very silly. Good thing I don't know anyone like that. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I animated pretty recently, I think. <laughs> oh, boy. You <laughs> called out so much in the last few I am days. calling all of you out. <laughs> I don't know how you would be able to call me out. Furry. Airbrush. <laughs> Furry. Please keep that in. Two responses immediately after each other. Fantastic. I don't know how you would call me out ever, Furry. <laughs> It did not take any thought, really. <laughs> oh, that hurt. <laughs> I'm surprised none of us uh, said the word. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kyle was like furry, you were like airbrush. The worst part is I'm not even so bad with the airbrush, so... Alright then, weep. You didn't deny the furry allegation, though. What? <laughs> <laughs> She's turning into a tea kettle. I thought it more like a Sylvester ro- rocket. Please, so someone needs to edit that. <laughs> Go down, please. <laughs> we need this. Anyhow, I we were talking about calling Opalia out. Maybe let's talk about like the major styles that exist, like the most popular style. The big one I can think of is obviously like that anime. Just anime in general? A- anime varies varies a lot. Yeah. yeah. There's like that classical uh, shoujo anime style, but there's also... Which I love that style. It's so beautiful. It's very sparkly. I like it. Uh, but then there's like uh, classes like the chibi art styles originated from anime. I think. I hope. <laughs> Didn't do research. <laughs> um, uh... 
That's a common theme here. Uh, also, like the very horny art style, you know, big boobs, the clothes are like kind of sticking to. Yes, the, like the clothes perfectly fold underneath the boobs. It's like if they were to take that shirt off, there's a boob pocket. Yeah, it's a loose shirt, but but those tiddlers, they're sticking out. <laughs> they're tiddlers. The good old tiddlers. I think I might have seen that. Hold on. Don't put in any examples, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I saw a drawing, though, one time where it was like an anime girl with big boobs, and then it just showed her shirt next to her, and it was just like two big pockets for her boobs. Yeah. <laughs> totally flattened. <laughs> I know, I know the image. It sounds really weird when you explain it, but it's funny to look at. I haven't seen it yet. By the way, I'm calling everyone out who, while listening to this, looked up horny anime art style. Definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Mom, Dad, it was for art research. <laughs> I'm doing a self. <laughs> <laughs> so, Opalia, you draw more in an anime style. Can you, can you elaborate on what that is? Showing that it's anime art style is like the classical big eye syndrome, though you don't even have to draw them extremely big. Like, they can be slanted. It's like the the eyes are drawn in such a specific style, uh, like style that you really can't explain it. Also, like the way the colors are chosen, um, the clothing style most, most of the time is like inspired by Japanese clothing, like the school uniform that most anime girls are wearing, but Honestly, I think like anime art style is simplified realism <laughs> in the most parts. Like obviously then there's this extreme nineteen nineties art style where it's like yeah, exactly, gigantic anime art style that could fit like uh from your nose to your forehead, like to your hairline up there. But then there are also like like slightly normal eyes. So I think Anime art says a lot about flowy clothing, blushing a lot. Like, don't forget the blush. It's more important. Air um, blush. Airbrush. Now, I don't think that in like classical anime art style that the airbrush is used a lot. It's mostly watercolors, actually. Shh. Okay. <laughs> also, the hair. It's like always big poofy hair. Uh, very long hair, elaborated hair stats. It's a lot about the hair, I think. At least for me. <laughs> um, I mean, all bold anime characters are making you look like a fool. Saitama's laughing at me. But then we have like Dragon Ball Z or Yu-Gi-Oh! Where the hairstyles are like, whatever. <laughs> um, but the thing is, anime art style is so hardly described. Like Some people say that Avatar is anime. Other people are like, no, that's comic. It's like... <laughs> It's like such a great area. A, a weird line between identifiable and fake. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Shira, uh, Princess of Power, the the new Netflix one, also hits that. Is this anime or is this cartoon? No. <laughs> Sorry, but I think it's not because the body are too sim like too simplified to be anime. Mm -hmm. Ah. Like. But then we have like Marvel, DC, all that art style, and then it's like a step comic up. sign. Yeah, <laughs> a step up in realism. Another really big one is cartoons, like very stylized, very animated most of the time. Yeah, expressive, exaggerated. So Koda, I think you have the most experience with cartoony art styles. Could you talk uh, about that a little bit? Yes. Uh, so when I first got into drawing, it was because I loved expressiveness and like dynamic uh, expression and faces and body posture and stuff. Just just really conveying emotion with just a few lines is what my ultimate goal as an artist is. Smiley face, angry face, yes. sad face. <laughs> just just put the the colon and then bracket, and you got my art style. But I think what uh cartoon is is it's a simplification so that emotion is then easier to read cartoon is all about emotion and it's about simplifying it down to capture the emotion in just a few lines so more recently i think it's become more just mainstream like cartoon is about making cheap animation you know 
but I think the original intention of cartoon was how much expression can we get in the fewest amount of lines? And how can we animate this? We have to draw this so many times. How do we do this fast? Yes, that, that, that is another Rest reason. Rest in peace, Marvel artist. I feel and like all of these... I feel like styles aren't just stylization, but also reduction. Uh-huh. Yeah, most definitely. It's what parts of reality do you want to take away, and it, what parts of reality do you want to make bigger? Yeah, because you got to have balance. You can't just make everything bigger. Right. Because then it just gets larger. <laughs> yeah. You just start drawing giant realistic humans. I think I I think I know one more topic we could talk about. Like, I come from a, I don't know whatever background. Koda comes from a comic background, and Apollo comes from an anime background. Maybe it could be fun how other styles like see each other. Oh yeah, that would be very interesting. Why you kind of picked the style, why you picked the style you did, and the, your perception of others. Okay. Uh, so when, when, I, when I look at other art styles, and I think this is a good reason for why I chose the one I did. Uh, I, th I think it's just so fun. Like I said, I've said this so many times, so everyone's probably sick of hearing it. But it's all it's it's fun to do cartoon to the point to where it's almost abstract. Like if you zoom in on one part of the image, you couldn't tell what it is. It's just so uh, expressive and so you know bulgy and whatever. Like uh, Arkham is an amazing example of this. All all his stuff is just so out there. You know you couldn't have drawn the same stuff with realistic body types and proportions and joints and made it look uh, as expressive as he did so i think that's why i kind of went towards cartoon um honestly since i was like a small child i've watched a lot of ghibli movies and i was like oh that's pretty that's what i want to do and every time i saw like marvel comics i was like damn that shading and the colors are just way too saturated and harsh for me i just don't like that like, I never really liked it when there was, like, extreme black shading added in pictures when I was younger. And I always thought that when the colors were extremely, like, saturated and bright, it felt weird. Like, it hurt my eyes, even though it was, like, professionally saturated, I guess you could call it. It just didn't feel like I would want to do that with what I want to do in my future. So that kind of was out of the way then video game art <laughs> the only video game that i've played a lot of was pokemon and minecraft <laughs> so that i also was kind of out of the way um and with like the western cal arts comic art style honestly until i was like 13 years old i only knew spongebob and like the other classics from nickelodeon like danny phantom which was a great show uh fairly odd parents or something like that but that just never struck me as much as animated because i just liked like the flowy fabrics the flowy hair and the overall like feeling it can give me like i feel it's an extremely expressive art style of done right like some are pretty boring i will not call out an anime but i would say for example studio ghibli uh when a character is feeling like an extreme emotion then their hair pretty much poofs up, up like with a cat that gets uh, stressed. And I just thought, that's beautiful. And that's kind of how I was like, anime is the way to go. Yes. But I also played like a fashion game. So fashion art was also something. Like... <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Uh, I love that we all have different perceptions on different things. So, Cohen, what drove you to, what choices did you make that kind of led you to picking how you draw now? I saw cool stuff. I tried to do cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> In a nutshell, basically. Yeah, I started out, um, I started out a lot more cartoony than I used to do, but I always had this feeling in the back of my mind, like, are you sure you want to do this? I, you, I, I know that you know that I know, that you know, because I'm you, that uh, you really also like those video game kind of things and those comic kind of things. And cartoons are still pretty cool, but is this really what you want to do? Then I began like, yeah, 
I kind of suck though. Guess I'll keep doing cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> then I did my first study on tentacles, and then I was like, oh, I can actually do this. Time to do it. Uh, so yeah, guess that's how my style improved. Tentacles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in a nutshell. Like you can. You can see it in my old sketchbooks. The first few drawings in there, they are horrendously not confident whatsoever. Because <laughs> I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that kind of stuff yet. I feel like some cartoons get so stylized and so specific that I just don't like them that much. Anime, I never really watched anime. <laughs> so, didn't have much with that. And I saw it as like a generic kind of style i hadn't discovered that many unique artists yet but every time i went to the art class people would draw anime and i was like i'm not going to do that mm -hmm. understandable though anime can be pretty boring but it's popular for a reason yes it can be boring unless like i said uh you take it and make it better so I think I think we could summarize kind of the stuff we said. We started off with, do you need an art style? You know, do you need one? And I think we all agreed, depends. Not really, but uh, it could be helpful if you're trying to do freelance work. Also, it does feel good to have one. It does. Yeah. Like I said at the start, it's a joke. It makes me feel special. You are I mean, always special, Coda. Yay. It's what specifically makes you, Coda. So I guess that's what really makes you special yay i am not a personality i am merely an art style how how do you create an art style and we all decided just steal steal everything and then frankenstein it together smoothie time smoothie time exactly and don't forget the strawberries yeah strawberries are... unless you don't like the straw no, then, you can leave then them don't forget them all right all right, you need the strawberries. The strawberries are a metaphor for the fundamentals. The strawberries are pens. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think I think that's another good point. You should worry about the fundamentals far before you worry about an art style. Uh, we so we decided that uh, that's how you get an art style. But can you steal one? Uh, no, not not exactly, but. You can almost steal one, and it's not good for your art if you only take inspiration from one source. So don't steal one, because then you have a water smoothie, and no one wants a water smoothie. Unless you want a glass of water. In which case, oh, that's pretty boring. Who needs I water? I don't know. <laughs> water is important to survive, though. This metaphor is breaking apart, so probably I'll stop it. <laughs> okay, wait, what if the- okay, hold on. What if the water was the fundamentals? That's why I told you Coda. juice. You don't really need juice, you need water to live. Like, your wait, body I want to make this, this- I want to make this a metaphor work. It is so deep, I can't leave it. <laughs> water is the fundamentals, and all the smoothie ingredients are the spice. And if you just add one ingredient, it just becomes a watered-down version of that ingredient, and it's gross. I did it! I think it's good because you called the one the, uh, fundamentals boring. It... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Forget the analogy. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> you shouldn't steal because it's not good for you. But is it immoral? Not really. Exactly. So, uh, is an art style helpful or harmful? It is harmful if you let it get in the way and think you have to draw in a style or have to find a style even. You don't need a style. So it's harmful if you feel obligated to draw in it. Uh, and should you cater your style? When it comes to portfolios, uh, it can be nice to cater your style. But when it comes to personal work, you should draw for you and for no one else. Good a you be. Indeed. <laughs> So, does everyone agree with these points and think that we did a good? No, no Code, I'm going to fight you on all of these. I, I absolutely disagree with everything we just agreed upon. Did Cohen just do a Pavia? Yeah, let's fight. Anyways, Cohen, do you guys actually have anything that you would like to add about art styles? Do you think that sums it up pretty well? One thing. How do fairies post, like, one art piece every half an hour? I take, like, eight hours for one drawing! <laughs> uh, but yes, I think that sums up the episode. Uh, this was us 
art friends talking about art styles. Opalia, you did the intro, do the outro. Okay, guys, uh, like and subscribe if you guys like this. Uh, ring the bell if you want to get notified every time you know the jazz. YouTube is doing all the time. And you'll be entered into our Amazon gift card giveaway. No! <laughs> <laughs> Cut this out, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I will repeat this. Um, so, guys, that was it. Like and subscribe if you liked it, and subscribe if you loved it. We upload every Friday, and we hope that you uh, will come back. See ya. Don't forget to steal. Bye. No, come on! <laughs> Poor Bren. <laughs> Poor, Poor Bren. Cody, you need to leave that in and not give an explanation for it whatsoever. Yes, but cut they this need... out. Yes. <laughs> Coda ends up putting this at the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be hilarious. Like after yes. the um, last snippets of the